From frozen tundras of ice to towering geological structures, our planet has no shortage of stunning geological formations. But there are some doubting the landscape that look truly out of this world. Join me for today's video. We're going to count down 15 of the most incredible geological oddities. Let's start with number 15, the White Pocket. White Pocket is a unique and visually stunning geological formation located in the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument in northern Arizona. It's situated within the Paria Canyon Vermilion Cliffs Wilderness, a protected area known for its rugged beauty and remarkable rock formations. The closest town is Page, Arizona, about an hour east of the trailhead. White Pocket is characterized by its swirling and intricate patterns of white and red Navajo sandstone, which have been sculpted over millions of years by the forces of wind and water erosion. The result is a mesmerizing landscape that resembles a frozen wave or surreal painting. The rock formations at White Pocket often feature delicate, contorted layers creating an otherworldly and dreamlike atmosphere. Due to its remote location, White Pocket sees fewer visitors compared to other famous landmarks in Arizona, like the Grand Canyon or Antelope Canyon. This relative seclusion adds to the appeal for those seeking a quieter and more intimate outdoor experience. Photographers and nature enthusiasts are particularly drawn to White Pocket for its unique and photogenic landscapes. The intricate patterns, textures, and vibrant colors of the sandstone formations provide endless opportunities for creative compositions. It's also a popular destination for hikers and backpackers who enjoy exploring the wilderness and the surrounding area. Number 14. Sutton Salt Lake Sutton Salt Lake is a product of a fascinating natural process that sets it apart from many other salt lakes around the world. It owes its existence to an ancient inland sea that once covered the Canterbury Plains during the last ice age. As the climate shifted and the sea receded, it left behind vast salt deposits buried beneath the Earth's surface. The lake's formation begins during the wetter months, typically from autumn to spring when rainwater fills the basin of an ancient dormant volcano. As the rainwater accumulates in the shallow depression, it dissolves these hidden salt deposits, creating a saline solution. Over time, the lake grows larger and larger as more rainwater feeds it, gradually saturating the water with dissolved salts. During the dry summer months, as the sun's intensity increases, the Sutton Salt Lake's waters evaporate, leaving behind a mesmerizing mosaic of crystalline salt patterns on its surface. These intricate salt formations are like delicate works of art, refracting the sun's rays in a dance of glittering brilliance. What sets Sutton Salt Lake apart from its counterparts is the stark contrast it presents in the midst of New Zealand's lush greenery. The lake's dazzling white salt crystals against the backdrop of verdant green landscape is truly one of a kind, especially as the water seems to evaporate before your eyes. Number 13. Panska Scala Located in the heart of the Bohemian paradise, the Czech Republic, Panska Scala is a geological oddity that takes us on a journey through the land before time. Formed over millions of years, Panska Scala stands tall and proud, an ancient sentinel guarding the secrets of the past. Carved by the patient hand of erosion, this rocky wonder was born from the juxtaposition of hard sandstone and the sheer slow-burning strength of Mother Nature. It's got an impressive age of over 60 million years. Yep, it's been around since the time when dinosaurs roamed. Talk about ancient history. If you stand at the foot of Penska Scala, you can't help but be awestruck by its grandeur. These hexagonal pillars of creation reach for the sky, standing proud at an impressive height of nearly 200 feet, as if daring the heavens to rival its magnificence. But don't let its imposing stature intimidate you, for it welcomes curious souls to explore its nooks and crannies. Columns have also been called Mansion Rock, because from a distance it resembles a castle, and since 1895, it's been the oldest geological reserve in Chechia. Number 12. The Smoking Hills Located on the Arctic Ocean in Canada's Northwest Territories, these barren, red-striped rocks have been burning continuously for centuries. This smoldering hellscape is aptly known as the Smoking Hills, and it must have been a shocking sight for the first European sailor to approach this strange remote landscape. The first recorded sighting of these burning hills was by the Irish explorer Captain Robert McClure in the early 1800s. His crew had journeyed to the Canadian Arctic, searching for the lost explorer Sir John Franklin, who disappeared five years earlier on an expedition to map the Northwest Passage. According to the stories, when McClure brought a piece of the smoking rock back to the ship, it burned a hole through his wooden desk. 
These explorers believed volcanic activity was causing the hills to burn, but in fact, there's another explanation. The underground oil shales in the area are rich in sulfur and brown coal, causing the rock to spontaneously ignite when the hills erode and expose the combustible gases to oxygen. Over the years, the sulfur dioxide produced from the combustion has changed the acidity of the area to such a degree that it's now a different ecosystem than the surrounding landscape. And the normally dark mudstone is baked and bleached by the heat, coloring the cliffs with strips of red and orange. Thanks to this strange natural phenomenon, it's likely that these Arctic hills were burning with thick plumes of smoke for centuries before the European expeditions. Indeed, local indigenous populations have long come to the area to gather coal. The nearest community, over 60 miles away, is called Palutok, which means place of soot or place of coal in the Anuvia Lukton language. Number 11. The Painted Mountains of Tabriz Also known as the Aladaglar Mountains, the Painted Mountains of Tabriz look like they're painted with a surreal canvas of colors, like a vibrant rainbow painted across the rugged landscape. Right outside of the historic city of Tabriz in northwestern Iran, the Painted Mountains owe their chromatic coloring to an abundance of mineral veins running through the earth. Over millions of years, these minerals, along with sandstone, have been compressed and oxidized, resulting in the creation of these stunning bands of red, white, yellow, gray, orange, and an array of pastel hues that grace these rocky terrain. So who knows what they'll look like a million years from now? In Azeri Turkish, the local language of Tabriz, ala signifies color, while dag denotes the mountain. True to their name, these mountains stand as a testament to nature's artistic prowess. It's like walking into a living work of art, where every step unveils a new stroke of color and texture, leaving visitors in awe of Earth's geological ingenuity. These mountains, although, aren't the only one of their kind. Comparable to other renowned painted mountains around the world, such as China's Zhangye National Geopark or Peru's Asaguante Mountains, the painted mountains of Tabriz present a mesmerizing spectacle of natural beauty. Each layer of vibrant color tells a story of Earth's ancient past, allowing us to glimpse into the remarkable processes that shaped our planet over the millennium, and once served as the home for flora and fauna that we'll never know about. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but the mountains of Tabriz are worth exponentially more. The region around Tabriz is a long history of human settlement, dating back to ancient times. The city itself is one of the oldest in Iran, with a history stretching back thousands of years. It's been an important cultural, commercial, and political center, witnessing various dynasties and empires rise and fall, and the mountains of Tabriz have stood as silent observers since the dawn of time. Number 10. Boiling Mud Pools of San Jacinto a lesser-known gem of San Jacinto, the boiling mud pools of San Jacinto are a geological oddity that has to be seen to be believed. Just don't get too close. As their name would suggest, the boiling mud pools, or Los Hervidaros, are small pools of superheated mud that boil furiously, sending plumes of steam into the air. The local community has thoughtfully marked paths with rocks and provided an information board, preserving the area's natural beauty while allowing visitors to witness its muddy marvels from a relatively safe distance. But aside from the ultra-hot mud, the mud pool offers a stark contrast to their surroundings. This raw, brown product of volcanic activity is surrounded by a lush green locale full of life. The vivid palette of green foliage embraces this untamed energy that lies beneath the Earth's surface, creating an intriguing harmony between the two forces of nature. But what sets these mud pools apart is their sheer temperature. Boiling at scorching temperatures, often reaching well above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the pools exhibit the raw power of geothermal forces. Such incredible heat is a testament to the molten energy simmering just below the Earth's surface, providing a glimpse into the extraordinary forces that shape our world. While the allure of the boiling mud pools may tempt some more foolish travelers, it's essential to approach with caution. Falling into this seething cauldron of mud is a disaster best avoided, as it could lead to severe burns and injuries. Just think how hard it is to not only get out of the thick mud, but to wipe it off. Think of it as nature's napalm. The steaming mud pools, they're an amazing thing from a safe distance. These bubbling, gurgling, burping pools are formed through a combination of factors, primarily volcanic and geothermal activity. Underground water is heated by nearby magma chambers, turning it into superheated steam that mixes with surrounding minerals and sediments, creating the boiling mud pools we see. Their formation is an intricate dance of the Earth's elements, taking place over thousands of years, and they continue to evolve to this day. Number 9. The Jade Coast 
the city of Itoigawa, Niigata Prefecture, has been known for its high-quality jade for centuries. In fact, it's considered one of the oldest jade-producing areas, and its jade has been used since prehistoric Jomon period, long before the Olmec and Mayan cultures. Even today, it remains a notable location in Japan where jade can be found. This is believed to be due to the city's geological position, where the Fossa Magna and the Itoigawa Shizuoka Tectonic Line meet. A plethora of minerals formed 20 to 500 million years ago, and they were mainly brought from the mountain ranges in the east, carried by rivers such as the Himekawa. As a result, many of these stones ended up on the coast of Itoigawa, often smoothed over by the current. Nicknamed the Jade Coast, or Hisui Kaigan in Japanese, this coastline consists of pebbly beaches where rare minerals such as jadeite and nephrite can be found. While it is strictly prohibited to pick jade in the Kotakigawa Jade Gorge, it's allowed on the Jade Coast. Up until the end of the 20th century, jade was so common on these beaches that the locals picked only high-quality specimens and returned the rest to the sea. It can be more difficult to find them today, but about a half a dozen give or take jade pebbles may be collected if one spends the whole day searching for them. In 1994, the Fossa Magna Museum opened up not very far from one of the beaches. Many specimens from Itoigawa are exhibited here, including many pieces of raw jadeite from the Jade Coast. This museum also offers a free service of identification and authentication of minerals found on the Jade Coast, so be sure to check it out if you wish to find out whether your jade is jadeite or nephrite. Number 8. Namafiat Normally, desert landscapes are characterized by a distinct lack of activity. Other than the occasional straight tumbleweed, tourists shouldn't expect to see much more than a few stoic cacti basking in the sun. But in northeastern Iceland is a site that defies all norms, a steaming, bubbling, and downright stinky desert. Namafjall is a geothermal area located east of Lake Mivat, looking like a mixture of an alien landscape and the hell from Dante's Inferno. Located at the base of a towering volcanic mountain, this site features a large collection of boiling mud pots and steaming springs called fumaroles, which are openings in the ground that emit sulfurous gases. Driving towards this site, the surrounding area could almost be mistaken for an Arizonian desert, but as visitors draw closer, any sense of familiarity drops away. At this site, the desert splits open and steams like a boiling kettle, but it's not water that the fumaroles and mud pots are spewing into the atmosphere. In order for visitors to enjoy this unique landscape here, they must be willing to endure the stench of the noxious fumes emitted from the cracks in the ground, which smell distinctly like rotten eggs. These fumes have driven away any plant life from the area, as well as some tourists with a more sensitive olfactory sense, leaving the site as barren of vegetation as Mars. But if visitors can manage to suffer through the stench, maybe pinch their nose with a clothespin, they can wander through a landscape unlike any other. In addition to the fumaroles and mud pots, bright arrays of colored mineral deposits adorn the ground around the area, so even if the site is devoid of plants, the dirt appears to be teeming with a vibrancy that even the showiest lichens and mosses would be hard-pressed to match. Moving on to number 7, Ashislepa Wilderness Study Area in the remote and arid expanse of northwest New Mexico's San Juan Basin lies a hidden wonder that feels like a portal to another world, the Ashislepa Wilderness Study Area. This extraordinary landscape stretching across 6,500 acres of the public of Bureau of Land Management land is a surreal masterpiece of weathered rock formations. As you wander through this otherworldly terrain, you'll be struck by the muted colors and the striking geology. Pale mushroom-shaped hoodoos rise like colossal alien trees, their silhouettes casting an aura of mystery over the rocky earth. Petrified tree stumps and ancient bones, like prehistoric markers of long-gone inhabitants, are scattered throughout the Badlands, a testament to the rich history that permeates this place. Geologically, this wilderness study area is a time capsule dating back 75 million years to the late Cretaceous period. It's composed of layers of sandstone, shale, mudstone, and bituminous coal, a diverse tapestry of ancient sedimentary history. Over a staggering 75,000 millennia, the forces of wind, water, and ice have carved and eroded these layers. This wonderland is not just visually stunning, it's also rich in fossils. The area's geologic age and climate have preserved a treasure trove of animal and plant fossils. The land holds the remains of prehistoric crocodiles, turtles, fish, and even dinosaurs, a prehistoric graveyard that sparks the imagination. 
Among the rock formations, you'll also find petrified wood, including numerous upright tree stumps with roots, standing as ancient witnesses to the passage of time. It is a living museum of natural history, where fossils are protected and not allowed to be collected, ensuring the preservation of this place. Getting to this area might require a bit of effort, but the rewards are beyond comparison. You'll explore this tranquil and dreamlike environment, that generally flat terrain makes navigation easy. While the formations extend for an impressive six miles along the wash, the most accessible and picturesque wonders are within one to two miles of the parking area. Not a bad deal, as long as you bring some good walking shoes and a big bottle of water. Number six, the Stromatolites of Hamlin Pool. Situated within a sheltered bay on the coast of Western Australia, Hamlin Pool appears at first glance to be a moderately interesting rock-strewn beach. Those rocks, though, look kind of odd. Are they from a lava flow or some arcane tectonic process? But these rocks are actually not rocks. Rather, they're active colonies of one of the first life forms on the planet. These trippy rock-like objects that dot this pool in remarkable numbers are called stromatolites. They're made by a single-celled organism called cyanobacteria. Previously, they were known as blue-green algae. Cyanobacteria came onto the scene about 3.5 billion years ago, well before the existence of any other complex life form. They are the oldest type of photosynthetic organism in the world, so old, in fact, that they predate plants by a couple of billion years and provided the Earth with most of the oxygen in the atmosphere necessary for supporting subsequent life forms. Additionally, the cyanobacteria are the earliest and were, for three quarters of the Earth's history, the main reef-building organism, thanks to their peculiar stromatolites. They're formed using sediment trapped in the sticky cyanobacteria's mucosal secretions, which are then cemented with calcium carbonate produced by the tiny organism. With a colony of millions of bacteria carrying out this process, the stromatolite grows over time at a rate of approximately half a millimeter per year. While stromatolite fossils, some of them three and a half billion years old, have been found around the world, the stromatolites of Hemlin Pool were the first living specimens ever discovered. Happened upon by oil surveyors in 1956, living stromatolites remain extremely rare, known to exist only in a small handful of places in the entire world. Hamlin Pool contains the most abundant and diverse collection of these living stromatolites thanks to the hypersaline water, which has twice the salinity of normal seawater. Additionally, the Hamlin Pool stromatolites are also the easiest to observe thanks to the clear, shallow water and the boardwalk that's been built out into the water, allowing visitors to see these ancient formations without disturbing their habitat. There's also a museum here in the nearby historic Hamlin Pool Telegraph Station that includes an aquarium containing the only living stromatolite in captivity in the world. Number 5. The Tatami Ishi the Tatami Ishi is a unique and captivating geological wonder. It's a natural formation that stood as a symbol of mystique and admiration for centuries. It's located in the Iya Valley of Tokushima Prefecture in Japan. This stone formation has become an iconic attraction, drawing visitors from far and wide to witness its magical allure. The name Tatami Ishi is derived from its striking resemblance to the traditional Japanese tatami mats used for flooring. This formation consists of a large series of flat rocks that fit together like puzzle pieces, forming a mesmerizing mosaic of geometric patterns. It almost seems as if nature itself carefully crafted this natural tatami for the world to marvel at. The geological history of Tatami Ishii dates back millions of years, when volcanic activity and the forces of erosion played a pivotal role in shaping this landscape. The rocks are predominantly made of sandstone, which over time has undergone weathering and compression, resulting in a distinct flat surface that we see today. To reach the Tatami Ishi, visitors embark on a journey through a landscape that's secluded. The valley, famous for its lush forest, gorges, and rivers, offers an idyllic setting for an encounter with this natural wonder. As travelers venture deeper into the valley, the Tatami Ishi emerges, a hidden gem amidst the verdant landscape. The allure of the Tatami Ishi not only is in its unique appearance, but also in the legends and stories that have woven around it over the centuries. Local folklore attributes mystical powers to the stones, believed to grant luck and prosperity to those who walk upon them. It's said that stepping on each of the rocks in a specific order can bring good fortune, ensuring that visitors engage in a whimsical game of luck walking to embrace the blessings of the land. It's been a source of inspiration for artists, poets, and travelers alike. Its setting and symmetry have inspired numerous paintings, haikus, and prose throughout Japan's rich cultural history. The location's also been featured in several traditional Japanese tales and folk songs, further cementing its place in the country's cultural heritage. 
In recent years, efforts have been made to ensure the preservation and conservation of the tatami ishi. Local communities and authorities recognize the significance and have taken steps to safeguard this precious geological formation. Visitors are encouraged to tread lightly and adhere to respectful practices, ensuring that this natural wonder remains intact for years to come. Number 4. Petrified Sea Garden Hidden off the beaten path in the quaint town of Saratoga Springs in New York, the Petrified Sea Garden stands as yet another fascinating yet odd-looking testament to the Earth's ancient past. This eye-catching geological wonder provides just a glimpse into a prehistoric underwater world, transporting visitors back in time to an era when the region was submerged beneath an ancient sea. This is a unique site that holds the remnants of an ancient marine ecosystem. Approximately 400 million years ago, during the Devonian period, what is now Saratoga Springs was covered by a vast inland sea. Over millions of years, the remains of marine creatures, including coral and brachiopods, settled on the seafloor, forming a rich ecosystem. As the millennia passed, the sea receded and the once submerged region began to transform. Geologic forces uplifted the layers of sediment, exposing these ancient marine fossils to the elements. Over time, the minerals in the surrounding groundwater seeped into the fossilized remains, gradually replacing the organic matter within the stone, resulting in the petrification process. Stromatolites were discovered a century ago in 1922 by stonemason and amateur geologist Richie Park, who owned the land on which the site is located. Geologists weren't sure what the fossils were exactly at first, and there was a question as to whether they were organic or inorganic. Eventually, they were recognized as organic and designated as the new genus Stromatolites. The name Petrified Sea Garden perfectly captures the essence of this site. The site resembles a mystical garden with petrified stromatoporoid adorning the rocky landscape like intricate fossilized flowers. These ancient fossils come in various shapes and sizes, resembling the latticework etched into the stone in a way that only Mother Nature could ever accomplish. The Petrified Sea Garden is not only a site of geological significance, but also a place of educational value. It offers a window into the history of the region, helping visitors understand the Earth's dynamic past. The site's been designated as a national natural landmark, recognizing its importance in preserving our geological heritage, even in a place like New York. Yes, the area is a protected landmark that was once open to the public, but today the Petrified Sea Garden sits on a private gravel company's land and is off-limit to visitors. With the private interests controlling the land, the future of these formations is a bit up in the air, but with luck, they'll survive for millions more years to come. Number 3. Laguna del Diamante High in the Andes Mountains of Argentina, at an altitude of about 13,700 feet above sea level, lies a breathtaking yet unforgiving beauty known as Laguna del Diamante. This gorgeous yet deadly natural wonder situated in the province of Mendoza captivates onlookers and researchers with its pristine turquoise waters and the backdrop of snow-capped peaks. The formation is a result of glacial activity during the last ice age. As glaciers carved their way through the landscape, they left behind these deep depressions in the earth. Over time, as the ice melted, these depressions filled with water, giving birth to stunning high-altitude lake we see today. But the beauty here is just skin deep because the Laguna del Diamante packs a deadly punch. To start with, the lagoon rests on sulfur-spewing vents within one of the world's largest volcanic calderas, belonging to the active Argentinian volcano Cerro Galán. And it's not just the poisonous gas you have to look out for, it's the hyperalkaline lagoon with a pH level of 11, is five times saltier than seawater, and has levels of arsenic that are 20,000 times higher than the amount deemed safe for drinking by the EPA. So yeah, it's safe to say the water here is hazardous and not suitable for human consumption. It also contains high levels of arsenic, a toxic element that can have severe health effects. Aside from the harmful gases, toxic water, and arsenic, the altitude of the site presents even more dangers to life at the lagoon. At about 15,000 feet above sea level, oxygen levels are low and ultraviolet light from the sun is 40% more intense than it is in the lowlands. But despite all this, life does find a way. Needless to say, it was quite a surprise then when Argentinian scientists exploring this place in 2010 discovered a flock of flamingos thriving on a healthy population of particularly resistant microorganisms. Rocks at the lagoon are covered with mats of unidentified microbes, which the colony of flamingos relies on for food. Those flamingos are considered a hardy species with a knack for adapting to different conditions. 
Those conditions are also thought to be quite similar to those of the early Earth. Scientists are therefore hoping that studying the lagoon's mysterious microorganisms will help reveal how life on Earth began. Another puzzle that remains to be solved is the identification of a red crystal compound that also grows on the lagoon's rocks. Preliminary results from an X-ray diffraction study failed to reveal the presence of any known minerals. The case of Laguna del Diamante just serves to demonstrate not only life's resilience, but also the strange and unexpected forms it takes on to survive in Earth's most hostile environments. Number 2. Fly Geyser In the remote and arid deserts of Nevada in the United States lies a vibrant and otherworldly sight that defies the imagination, the Fly Geyser. It's located on private land in the Black Rock Desert. This captivating geothermal marvel has become an icon of natural beauty and a testament to the power of geothermal activity. The origins of Fly Geyser are rooted in human intervention, making it a unique and accidental creation. In 1964, while drilling a well for geothermal energy exploration, a geothermal company struck a geothermal pocket. The scalding water reached temperatures of up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, rose to the surface, and the rest, as they say, is history. Over the decades, mineral-rich water spewing from the geyser has steadily deposited layers of thermophilic algae and calcium carbonate. These minerals have given the geyser its mesmerizing and psychedelic appearance, adorned with striking hues of red, green, and orange. As a result of its continuous growth, the fly geyser continues to create an ever-changing and dynamic landscape. Though the fly geyser's exact age is difficult to determine, it's been actively growing for over half a century. Its unique formation and rapid growth have turned it into an accidental work of art, an astonishing fusion of nature and human activity that captivates. As for its size, the geyser has grown to be several feet tall and spans a significant area thanks to its continuous growth over the years. The amount of water spouted by the geyser can vary, but it consistently releases water at a steady rate due to geothermal activity. And due to the location on private land, the geyser is not designated a tourist attraction and is not open to the public. However, its proximity to the Black Rock Desert and the Burning Man Festival draws a significant number of visitors every year. While they may not have direct access to the geyser, it's a captivating beauty and it's become a symbol of the unique and transformative experiences that await them in the vast expanse of the Black Rock Desert. Number 1. Cueva de las Espadas there's a place on Earth where everything is quite literally crystal clear. The Cuevas de las Espadas, also known as the Cave of Swords. This place is one of the world's most incredible, awe-inspiring, and most profound geological oddities. The cave is hidden deep within the Nica Mine in Chihuahua, Mexico, and it's a place like no other. The story of Cueva de las Espadas' discovery began at the turn of the 21st century, when a group of miners stumbled upon this literal hidden gem by sheer chance while working in the Nica mine. And what a stumble it was, because the stars of the show are these gigantic gypsum crystals which have earned this place its fame. Some of the largest crystals on the planet, these magnificent beauties can reach an astonishing 36 feet in length. The formation of this underground spectacle is a captivating tale of times long forgotten. Around 600,000 years ago, the entire region was submerged underwater. As mineral-rich water seeped through the limestone rocks, it laid the foundation for something truly magical. When the water eventually evaporated, it left behind these stunning gypsum crystals that define the cave's unique allure. And while the thought of a crystal-filled cave is alluring, there's still plenty of peril to be found in these glittering depths. The cave's temperature can reach an intense 136 degrees Fahrenheit, creating a challenging environment for explorers. But it's not a dry heat. The humidity inside the cave is a staggering 90%, making it an unforgettable boiling experience for anyone brave enough to venture inside. However, despite all odds, some microorganisms and bacteria have evolved specifically to thrive in such a hot place devoid of resources. It's also the cave's odd ecosystem that allows these gypsum crystals to grow at the incredibly slow rate of just 0.04 millimeters per year. Patience and time have truly crafted this masterpiece. As one might imagine, though, getting down to explore the Nika mines isn't available to anyone, and it's not exactly a hot tourist attraction. The mine is mainly open to miners and researchers. In order to further preserve the Crystal Caves, all mining operations have ceased. Both the mining and exploration efforts require flooding the caves via water pumps, which were turned off in 2017, allowing the caves to reflood naturally. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.